I'm going to show you everything you need to calculate your own RSI indicator in this episode. There's a few things you'll need in order to be able to complete this episode. The first thing you need is a way to retrieve candlesticks from Binance. And my previous episode show you how to do that. I've linked it in the description. The second thing you'll need is TA Lib. Now, if you're using TA Lib on Windows, it can be notoriously difficult to install. So I created a video that shows you exactly how to do that. And I've also linked that in the description below. Once you've got those two things sorted, let's continue. Before we get into how to code the RSI indicator, I wanted to talk a little bit about what it is and what it can be used for. I won't be covering everything, and if you want a more detailed review of the RSI indicator, check out my blog post that I've linked in the description below. So the RSI is an indicator that oscillates between 0 and 100. Doesn't matter how much your security happens to range, whether it's Bitcoin, which can go up into the tens of thousands, or you're looking at something simple like the Euro USD, which can just oscillate between 1.01 you know, .01 and up to about 1.04, um, it will always give you a value between 0 and 100. In classic RSI theory, the values of 30 and 70 are considered to be uh, significant, and we'll be using them to start off with in our trading bot. When a security reaches a value, an RSI value of 70 or more, it's often considered to be overbought which means that it's likely that the price is going to start trending down in the near future. In a similar manner, if the RSI value reaches a value of 30 or below, it can be considered to be oversold, in which case it's likely that it's going to start trending back up again. I'm sure you can already start to imagine some strategies you could use with these values. Now, I'll be honest, many traders think that the value of 70 and 30 aren't quite accurate, and to be honest, it's likely that every single security has its own sort of values of the RSI that are the most applicable. The cool thing about what we're doing with our trading bot is we're going to start by using the RSI standard values of 70, 30, and a period of 14. But then we're going to use backtesting later on in the series to establish the exact RSI values that apply to whatever security you might choose to use. So follow along as we add the RSI indicator to your trading bot. In this episode, we'll be building our RSI indicator in our indicator underscore lib library. For those of you who haven't followed my previous series, you'll know that I always like to use libraries whenever I can in code. And the indicator underscore lib uh, library is exactly the same. That's the place where we go to add any new indicator that we might want to use. And the cool thing about it is it means that we can use any indicator that we've ever created and apply it to whatever we happen to be analyzing now. So let's do that. Head over to the indicator underscore lib file, or if you haven't got it already, create it uh, in your project, and then scroll right down to the bottom, and we're going to start by defining the function. You can see there as I was scrolling around some of the previous ones that I've covered in previous episodes, and you can check them out on my channel or go to the GitHub and all the links will be there for you. So what we want to do here is we want to create the RSI indicator um, to, to add to um, the data frame that we're going to be using later on in the series. So the function is called calc underscore RSI, and it has <clears throat> for it four different variables. The first one is going to be the data frame that we're going to use uh, to, to calculate the RSI on. Then we want the RSI size with a default of 14, which is the standard RSI size. And then we've got two other variables which we won't cover in this episode, but we will be covering in the future, which is to display the RSI, which might be helpful if we want to use Plotly to dis uh, display our, our information, and the symbol which we'll use for the title uh, when we want to do that. Once we've created the function, we want to go ahead and add our comments. And <laughs> I love commenting code. I like to think of that as a way of giving your future self a saving of 30 to 60 minutes because they're not going to have to figure out what you did and why you did it in six months' time when they're trying to figure it out. So make sure you comment your code. It'll really help you when you do some troubleshooting. Here, I'm just adding in all of the details that we need in order to set up the function, including the fact that the data frame, when it's provided, must include a column that is closed with a lowercase c uh, at the start of it. OK, 
Okay, now I'm going to add in the parameters uh, and just define them. So our data frame parameter needs to be a pandas data frame object. Our RSI size needs to be an integer with a default of 14. Our display is a Boolean and our symbol is a string. Now you can sort of see there the autocomplete on my um, IDE. I'm using PyCharm is actually pretty advanced. It, it suggests quite a lot. I've recently been trying out the GitHub Copilot uh, code completion, and I've got to be honest, I'm quite impressed with it. Um, I'd really be interested in knowing if anyone else is interested in learning more about it. If so, I'll create a video of a review on how to use it. Um, it does throw some pretty weird errors um, at times, which can be a bit confusing, but honestly, it's really, really helpful. With our commenting completed, uh, we're going to now go ahead and calculate the values in the data frame for our RSI. And because we're using TALib, which is one of the world's like you know most used <laughs> libraries when it comes to technical indicators, this is actually a really, really straightforward process. So all we do is we're going to pass it a couple of uh, pieces of information, the close column of the data frame and then the RSI size uh, applied to the time period. And when we go ahead and backtest this later on uh, in this series using backtesting.py, um, we might want to change that time period because it might end up that's different uh, securities or different, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance coin, whatever we're using may have uh, RSI values that are more applicable or more effective. And we return the data frame at the end of the function. Now that we've got our RSI uh, ready to go and it's applied to the data frame, let's bring that into our main function so that we can start to use it in our strategy. So to do that, um, all we need to do is we're going to add the RSI indicator to our candles, as the comments say, and we're going to do that in our double underscore main double underscore function, so our main function of main.py. So the RSI is going to be equal to the indicator underscore lib dot calc RSI with a data frame uh, from the data that we collect earlier and our RSI size uh, as default at 14. Okay, and we're going to print that to the screen just to double check that it's working. Just going up there to make sure that I've imported uh, indicator underscore lib. If you haven't done that, you will need to import that into your file. And then I've just run the RSI. You can see there the values uh, on the right hand side. Yours will, of course, be different because you'll be doing it at a different time from me. In the next episode, we're going to take everything we've done so far and start to turn it into a strategy which you can use to trade whatever cryptocurrency symbol you choose.